Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thanks very much for joining us. It is good to be officially back today. This is our first day, but obviously because of uh, Cyclone Cody and then the Tonga eruption, we've had a very busy past 72 hours. And we kick off with the Tonga eruption and in fact, the ash cloud that is now tracking across the Coral Sea and straight into Queensland this morning. You can see it as the sun was rising, there's an orange or sort of rust uh, tint to it as it comes through. It's more of a bluish color once the sun's on top of it and that's what you're seeing right here. So this area of cloud is mostly due to the eruption from Tonga and it is now tracking across here. So there might be um, even a fine bit of dust on the surfaces of Queensland across the next 24 hours as that tracks along. New Zealand far to the south, not currently under sort of the ash risks and out to the other side we've got Cody, we'll show you that in a moment. Now here is the infrared satellite from Tonga. Now when the eruption occurred, the big one on Saturday night, this entire screen would have been bright red and even blacks and whites in it to show you how high the clouds were going. What you're seeing here with the yellow and the green, just your usual kind of clouds. The eruption occurring right here with that island and the main settlement of Tonga down here to the south. And then we've got obviously to the north, plenty of other islands, but the vol volcanic eruption occurring here, most of the ash over Sunday from smaller eruptions look to be going out to the east thanks to a very light westerly wind that's blowing through there at the moment. That's good news, in other words. Now this of course could change at any moment, but when we recorded this, it was a pretty quiet start to Monday so far. Here is the infrared map now for the New Zealand area, and it's all about ex-tropical Cyclone Cody, which is tracking out to the east. Unfortunately, the bright yellow clouds are where all the rain is. And I say unfortunately, not because the campers care about it, but because the farmers, the growers, and those on water supply, you know, rainwater supply, we need rain. Look how dry it is. The dark blue here means dry, dry conditions. So the storm out to sea, mostly missing the North Island, but of course, a uh, bit of wind and rain in the east and the big waves, the big swells, several meters are tracking along those eastern beaches. So even though the weather on land might be okay, this storm is just offshore. The bright whites showing gale force winds. So anyone who says it's a fizzer, show them this. It's a fizzer in the sense of we were hoping for rain, but it's not a fizzer in the sense of there was no storm. The storm is right here. The best um, analogy I'm using today is this is a bowling ball, a bowling, uh, you know, like you're in a bowling alley. There's the bowling ball. Here's one pin. There's the second pin. And this one's gone out into the gutter. It's missing us. I don't know if all of you will get that analogy, but it's, uh, it's a hard one sometimes to get these storms coming down and perfectly lining up to bring us the rain. So speaking of rain, here is the forecast maps and we've slightly changed them this year. We're just gonna trial this for a few days. We'll see what the feedback's like on YouTube uh, and elsewhere. But what it shows differently to the other maps is now 24 hours of rainfall accumulation, not just showing you the lunchtime map, which we've been doing. This is still lunchtime, but it shows you 24 hours worth of rain coming in around it. So therefore, it's a bit, little bit easier to kind of work out where the heavy rain will be and where the showers will be. So clearly here on Tuesday, the storm's offshore. It's right next to the Chatham Islands. Damaging winds potentially for them and heavy rain, although just another day in the office for the Chathams. The difference is it'll be warmer, not a cold southern blast, but warmer weather. And you can see with the rainfall accumulation, we're talking around 40 millimetres or so to begin with, and mostly dry elsewhere around New Zealand. By Wednesday, here comes the cold front out of the Southern Ocean. You might have already heard about this. Temperatures are about to drop. And as you can see, probably 30 or 40 millimetres out there on the west. And for Southland, we're looking at more 10 to 15 millimetres coming through. The blue line indicating the pulse of cold air that's about to come out of the Southern Ocean. And by the way, it's going around an enormous high pressure zone. This is the pattern we've been seeing for the last two months. Every time a high starts to roll in, if they're a southern placed high, it brings in a southerly first. When the high leaves, the warmer northerlies kick back in. So this is the beginning of the high, so the colder change comes through. The remnants of Cody out here to the east, so the Chathams have only got a few showers and that light blue colouring, just a few showers, maybe only five millimetres or so, and mostly dry in the north, maybe a light isolated shower, but the North Island looks very dry. On Thursday, that colder change spreads up New Zealand, so we've got plenty of showers accumulating, though, only around about five to ten millimetres. That's why these 24-hour rainfall maps might be quite useful to you watching these videos, 
Now you get a better understanding as to just how many showers coming through across that day. So certainly uh, not a huge amount coming in, but enough to be noticed in the South Island, but the North Island stays fairly dry. By Friday, more showers, mostly dry though around the North Island. Those rainfall numbers are below five millimeters for a 24 hour period. So don't get too excited there. Maybe around Wided Upper and Hawke's Bay, it might be 10 millimeters. Otherwise, in comes the next dry, high pressure zone. And our final map shows the uh, showery weather around New Zealand pretty much easing wasn't very much over the next few days. The North Island's not in for much at all. And then this powerful high coming on through. If only our weather was more like Australia, Alice Springs getting the second burst of heavy rain in just a week. They're probably having one of the wettest years they've had on record this year, uh, or over the last 12 months, I should say. Uh, huge amounts of rain falling for them, and a lot of rain this La Nina summer for the eastern side of Australia, but not New Zealand. We're halfway to Antarctica, not everything that happens up here comes to us. And that is all from me. Thanks so much for the support on YouTube over the weekend. Thank you to Sean and others behind the scenes who put up some extra videos. And uh, we're still finding our way with extra things. So thanks for your um, understanding as we put up some videos yesterday. But we're getting more that we're going to do during these breaking events. And hopefully we can get some more satellite imagery up there as well for those breaking events when it's a storm or even a volcanic eruption. That's all from me. We'll see you on Tuesday with our next weather update for New Zealand.